JJ the CPA, hope you're doing well. Want to give you an update on things related to the Paycheck Protection Program as well as the EIDL and a couple of things related to the IRS. You know, this is fast moving. Um, there's stuff going on every single day. Today, the uh, SBA came out with a guidance or frequently asked questions actually uh, related to the PPP and also the SBA came out with a bulletin uh, related to the EIDL on a couple of things and then the IRS has come out with a couple of things so we're going to jump into that so the first thing to keep in mind is that it was on the thir on the 27th of March 4 p.m. Central Standard Time that we have this new CARES Act and in it is that PPP so I've seen in the news today complaints from every sector a lot from the senators um, that are indicating that things are moving slow and it's disastrous and things to that effect um, what I would say is this um, they are moving lightning fast um, right now we have just people waiting still on their twelve hundred and twenty four hundred dollar checks and five hundred per kid uh, those are expected to start going out next week the week of April 13th to those that they have information on to do a direct deposit for those that they're going to be mailing checks it'd be the week of the 20th and here we are when we move over to the PPP that they're already taking application um, my personal opinion is there won't be really any dollars that are received by the uh, applicants this week if there are it would probably be late during the week so uh, just the theme of patience this week that the banks are moving fast SBA is moving fast and I think everybody's uh, trying to do the best they can with this PPP take note though the EIDL um, that has been around for a while and that is through December 31st 2020 that that is available uh, there were some things that came out today and I went live on my YouTube channel here for about three hours and 45 minutes and there was a lot of discussion about this SBA bulletin and the limitation of a thousand per employee and kind of uh, I hadn't been able to read through it and so uh, I did take a look at that so I'll, I'll address that and the frequently asked questions um, bulletin that the SBA did today uh, there's a number of things that are clarified um, if you've been watching my videos uh, there's nothing in those clarifications that I hadn't already clarified so that's good all my videos still stand so let's just jump into kind of where we're at so as of Monday morning um, so it's you know just our time reference it's 1 a.m. Uh, Central Standard Time right now on the 7th of April so when I say yesterday morning Monday the 6th in the morning when we arrived into the business day um, 36 billion had already been accounted for or applied for since the opening submission started just on Friday the 3rd uh, it represented 212,000 applications by the end of Monday uh, a total of 43 billion had been uh, applied for one thing to note is that it is 349 billion that is in the CARES Act to be given out under the PPP program uh, so 14 percent is what has been uh, in essence applied for now typically in the beginning just like anything else there's a there's a huge anticipation but it probably maybe won't go at the exact same rate uh, but if we are already at 14 percent it is possible that by the end of next week so maybe when we hit April 17th that it's possible maybe had has run out uh, the White House and it seems as other um, government officials I guess uh, that would be in the know related to this indicated that if it does run out then they'll have to just go get more funding related to that nonetheless you're gonna want to go ahead and get your application in as soon as possible this Friday the 10th um, will be when self-employed individuals sole proprietorships and independent contractors can apply for their own PPP by using their self-employment income to determine in essence payroll costs um, to then arrive at an average monthly payroll cost 
times two and a half to then give them some relief. Um, there are um, already some issues, I guess, with the banks, but the senators have written letters to, um, I guess, to the IRS and also to the SBA. Uh, senators are calling on the SBA to include cannabis businesses. I haven't seen anything official on that. Of course, we know with cannabis, um, they're still it's still legal at the federal level. Um, but the senators are saying that these are small businesses that do need help. Um, so I'm not sure where that stands other than there's been a letter written. Um, and then clarification that 501c3s, churches, and nonprofits all do qualify. Clearly, it's in the CARES Act, Section 1102. But they do qualify for the PPP. Some of the banks have um, maybe not either been aware of that. Nonetheless, senators are making it clear. Uh, Wells Fargo uh, announced that they're going to limit the amount that they are going to participate uh, to $10 billion. Um, And so I believe they're already there. Um, with that, they are just, in essence, reducing their risk. Um, what has really changed here is that when the law came out on the 27th, which we're talking 11 days ago, um, the act called for 4% on any unforgiven amounts. So when the banks are then, in essence, giving out these dollars on the PPP program, whatever is not forgiven, then that bank, in essence, is going to be carrying on their books. Well, if you have a bank and they're now carrying what the rate is ended up to be, which is only 1%, then banks are having to keep reserves in play to cover 1% loans. Remember, the bank's job is not to do anything other than get repaid. It has to remain strong to be able to lend other dollars out. And if the bank is using up reserves, in essence, to protect 1% loans, uh, in theory, they're really not making any money off of that. Um, some of the other large banks have basically gone with the stance that you not only have to have a bank account with them, but you need to have um, a loan relationship uh, with them. And, and the reason why, I haven't read this anywhere, but the reason why I think is clear, which is when you're getting a loan, okay, and you're going to then, it, whatever you owe on it, you're going to owe 1% on interest. But if you've got um, somebody and they are... Um, uh, with that large institution and they have another loan, okay? And let's say that that loan is at 5%, right? So they're going to go, okay, well, if we have with this one client a 1% loan and it ultimately ends up being $50,000, okay? And then we have this other uh, amount of money with our that same um, customer and it's at 5%, okay? So the bank's going to look at that overall and figure like, well, we have a 1% amount at 50 grand, but then over here at 5%, they owe us 250,000. So what the banks are doing is saying, okay, well, all together that customer would owe us 300,000. And in essence, on a portion of it, it'd be at 1%. The rest is at 5%. And then the way they're looking at it is, okay, it's not really 1% for us overall. We do have this existing amount of loan with them, so we'll just kind of take an average to it. Makes sense. It's smart. Um, I've got a video that I talk about smart bankers. Um, a number of the smaller institutions aren't as concerned about that uh, because they're not going to be giving out as vast amounts as the national companies. Uh, so right now, uh, Wells Fargo doing the $10 billion, I think, has also just gone a step further to say, Here's the amount that we are willing to carry on our books um, on an average amount expected for forgiveness. So with that being said, on the um, PPP, so the Small Business Administration uh, came out today with uh, a frequently asked questions, uh, which is great. Uh, so with this, uh, the small or the, uh, the, the Paycheck Protection uh, Program loans so I'll just hit some of the highlights here in uh, question one. Uh, basically, this is indicating uh, that it is the average monthly payroll costs, um, and it can be for the preceding year. Um, so for providing an accurate calculation of payroll costs, it's the responsibility of the borrower. Uh, lenders can expect that in good faith. 
um, and then as the um, documentation comes into play or what's going to be required to back it up just know this that when you are going to the end result of this loan which is the forgiveness period and you're trying to then indicate to the bank examiner in essence why your loan should be given and to what extent what will be reviewed is how you came up with the amount that you borrowed so this is in essence letting the banks know and this is something i've said from the beginning which is the banks really have minimal risk here um, they're to verify information verify your identity so to speak uh, and then be able to just give the dollars out to basically kind of fast track this um, so uh, the banks that are wanting uh, it, what's clear in here um, that the uh, banks that are asking for financial statements and tax returns um, and, and kind of trying to evaluate risk uh, they're doing that for their own internal purposes um, it could be either to delay it could be to see well is this uh, a, a situation where maybe the existing loans that we have are in trouble uh, they want to do a reevaluation banks don't have to do anything they don't have to give you the money uh, so if they do want to review it just know that if they are asking to review anything else um, it is really for their purposes uh, this is just letting you know our small business concerns uh, required to have 500 or fewer and the answer is no but this is just indicating that there are certain specific uh, circumstances where uh, they would still qualify typically what would come into play there is that you have multiple locations uh, for a business uh, if we skip down to uh, four uh, what this is talking about here is as it relates to the let's see the PPP application okay so when we're looking at that okay there's this question three that is about the affiliation is in where this frequently asked questions coming into play so is the applicant or an owner of the applicant an owner of any other business or have common management with any other business if yes list such businesses and describe the relationship on a separate identified uh, a separate sheet identified uh, as addendum a so the thing to know on that the purpose of that question is to ensure that an affiliated group that really has more than 500 employees um, isn't applying or it's a, or, or the the it's being disclosed so if need be it could be further uh, for lack of a better word investigated um, so I don't think you need to overthink it uh, this is just a situation where basically they're wanting to ensure that there's not too much being uh, loaned out all right let's see where so if we uh, look at uh, number seven of the if we're looking at number seven um, the rest of these are on affiliation uh, what's made clear here number seven is that the CARES Act excludes the definition definition of payroll cost employee compensation in excess of an annual salary over a hundred thousand dollars so there's been some discussion on this and I've uh, gone round and round with a group of CPAs and a couple of docs because they had the understanding that the hundred thousand dollar limitation was everything per employee um, and what this is making clear is that it's a maximum hundred thousand per the employees wages okay but the retirement the health insurance and the SUDA is in addition to that so it's just the salary that's limited to the hundred thousand um, and that's what I had interpreted from the beginning uh, question eight uh, just letting it be clear uh, that these loans that are being taken so to speak uh, can be included to cover these costs okay so if someone's going to be out sick or they have family leave or vacation that's fine that loan can cover that this is in essence with the PPP the money is just to be continued given to the employee so to speak uh, what's clear here and I've talked about 
is that if there's going to be a tax credit taken then that has to be reducing down your payroll expense which is clear from the standpoint of um, uh, you didn't pay those dollars out if you have a credit there uh, if we go to number 10 here what if an eligible borrower uh, contracts with a third-party payer such as a payroll provider or PEO so this isn't if you're hiring a company to process your payroll this is talking about that the in essence those employees of yours are under a separate ID number like a leasing company that's what a PEO is and what's indicated here is in question 10 that the PEO will not uh, be able to claim anything related to those employees of course uh, what it comes down to uh, is the common law employer rules um, I was talking about this uh, as I travel around the nation I've been to over 50 cities in the last 18 months speaking on behalf of uh, a wonderful organization called Surgent that provides continuing professional education to CPAs all over the country long story short on that is that when you're looking at the PEO or the third party um, that's in essence taking on the employer role but only from the standpoint of pooling resources together uh, being able to have one retirement plan get better rates on health insurance and work comp etc long story short if you are the business that you have control over those employees in essence you're just having a service take care of all these other aspects um, that's when you're dealing with the PEO and basically what's indicated is to get documentation from the PEO that would then substantiate that same information that in essence would report it on the 941 uh, if we go to number 11 uh, what this is just indicating is that it's fine that if you have multiple owners uh, that one person can sign uh, something to take note of is that on the application update uh, that came out on Friday the 3rd uh, there is now um, it was changed to say uh, list all owners 20 percent uh, or more uh, before that it just said more than 20 percent but at the same time um, one person can sign for the organization where originally uh, it was indicated that each person would have to sign all right then if we go to um, let's see uh, then go down to number 14 uh, what period should borrowers use to determine their number of employees payroll costs to calculate maximum loan amounts okay so we have number of employees and we have payroll costs to calculate the loan amount so uh, borrowers can calculate their aggregate payroll costs using data from the previous 12 months okay so the what's key there is that that's what the law states that's what we put ours together for the clients that then took to their banks um, is on the last 12 months what you'd be pulling the second third and fourth quarter 19 941s first quarter 2020 941 so it does require a little extra work but nonetheless that's what the law is uh, this is making it clear and I was hoping that we would see something like this because banks were doing the or part banks were saying hey we'll just go with uh, the documents that you have and we'll just take calendar year 2019 so if you're going with the calendar year 2019 if you just get your your form w3 and go to box five now you have your annual wages uh, i've got several videos on why box five is the best uh, this is indicating for seasonal businesses they can use averages if you've only been in business uh, for this year you can come up with a monthly average uh, based on January 1st through February 29th and then borrowers may use their average employment over the same time periods to determine their number of employees for purposes of implying an employee base size standard uh, borrowers may elect to use SBA's usual calculation which is the average number of employees per pay period in the 12 completed calendar months prior to the date of application or the average number of employees for each of the pay periods that the business has been operational if it's not been operational for that 12 months so uh, I'll note you to this um, this is my uh, website JJ the CPA help 
um, you can see right up here top left JJ the CPA help um, this is a free website you wouldn't find anywhere on here where you give me any information about you you don't send me an, you don't you don't send me an email and then I send you some secret tip or report um, this is here to help period the end I'm not taking on new clients uh, so I just want you to feel comfortable going to and referring your your friends to JJ the CPA help Dot com. Why am I bringing this up? Because what I'm going over, I put a copy of um, on my jjcpahelp.com website backslash PPP page. Uh, but anyways, you can get this and then go through the questions uh, yourself that we're going through. Um, and as it relates to then the number of employees, uh, you're going with basically an average over the period of time. Um, and the reason it's key when you're looking at the uh, application, okay, up here it says next to where you enter the dollar amount, what's the number of employees, okay? So what are your equivalent full time? What's the average um, over that 12 month period? But probably what's more important is, you know, what was your head count February 15th when this covered period started? Okay, so at the end of the day, then it, it, the SBA said, yes, you can either use uh, the last 12 months or calendar year. So on my website, I've got the application, the latest one. And then you can see here, um, I've got a, a PPP worksheet that's just in PDF. Then I have the same worksheet that's in Excel. And on these, this would be based on your last 12 months, which you'd be pulling quarter by quarter. I also have on here based on 2019 calendar year. So I've got here the PDF and then, and then the Excel. Um, and related to that, it's different where you're getting the information. That's why we have the two. And then you're gonna find these um, frequently asked questions. And then this is the guidance uh, here uh, that the Small, Small Business Administration uh, put out last Friday the 3rd. Let's see, a couple other things to note. Um, there were some when I went live today that, uh, that are being self-employed and they were wanting um, to know, did they need a profit and loss if they haven't filed for 2019 for self-employed? And I said, yes, because it's the net based on what we know or don't know, but it's the net of your um, expenses or your, your income minus your expenses on Schedule C that is going to qualify. So you need to have a sample profit and loss or not, you don't need to have a sample, but I put up a sample profit and loss for those that aren't, um, you know, uh, having their numbers tracked in QuickBooks or some kind of accounting software. So a couple of things. If we go to, uh, uh, keep going on the frequently asked questions. Uh, number 15, uh, should payments that an eligible borrower made to an independent contractor or sole proprietor be included in calculations of the eligible borrower's payroll costs? The answer is no. That's what uh, I had been indicating from the beginning. And the biggest reason why is that those that are receiving 1099s, though that those that are the sole proprietor, the self-employed, they get to go and apply for their own PPP. So it makes zero sense that those that pay independent contractors or pay, in essence, somebody that's not an employee, um, that they would get to continue get the, getting the money, meaning the payer of uh, somebody that is paying a 1099 individual makes zero sense uh, that that person would be able to borrow money to pay somebody who's also able to borrow money. Plus, independent contractors are just that. They're independent contractors. They are not employees ever, 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 ever. And then number 16, uh, put to rest what, um, I've got some videos on it that I did last week. Uh, one of them I put together uh, specifically for a bank and their leadership to review. And basically what it came down to was there was questions that will the taxes that are withheld and matched for payroll purposes 
somehow reduce down the amount that you're able to be forgiven on your loans. And my video kind of went through and just talked, I have two of them, that in 1102, there's a definition sections. And, and yes, in that section, it says payroll costs do not include, and it lists chapter 21, 22, and 24. And for whatever reason, people then drew a conclusion, oh, well, the taxes uh, that are in those uh, chapters, well, then those are not payroll costs, therefore they are not going to be forgiven. That is wrong with the IRS, or I should say, what the uh, SBA is making it clear is that the payroll costs are included on the gross uh, without taking into account any subtractions for what the employee may be paying. So uh, they had already addressed this um, when they were uh, giving out the guidance that was uh, provided on Friday the 3rd. Um, but I guess they needed to really reiterate this uh, to ensure that those that are paying uh, independent contractors, sole proprietors, that they're not getting money to pay them. Okay, so let's see. There's a new Form 7200 that's out that's with the IRS. And um, on the form uh, 7200, uh, this is something that is in play uh, for those that um, have credits, okay? And so when I say credits, I'm talking about the advanced payroll employer credits due to COVID-19. Uh, when you look down here, okay, there are three different kinds of credits. Uh, the employee retention credit uh, for the quarter. So that is basically if someone's out due to this, they don't have to be caring for or have it or have kids. If they're out and they're being paid, then the employee retention credit that came out of the CARES Act, okay, this line one, basically that is whatever the employer has paid the employee, 50% uh, of that will be a tax credit maximum of 10000 of wages per employee, which is also to say that's a maximum of 5,000 tax credit uh, per employee. Now, for the uh, total qualified, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> sorry, uh, the total qualified sick leave uh, wages that are available for that credit Okay, so there's two different levels on that one. I've got lots of videos on this, but there's a $500, $511 per day maximum, uh, and it's 10 days max per employee for that one, and that's with, they have COVID, COVID symptoms, they are in quarantine or told to be in quarantine. That's where that comes into play. Then we have this third credit, which is a maximum $200 a day, max 10,000 per employee. So anyways, you have the three different credits uh, that could come into play. And the way that you get the credit is you reduce down what it is that you would pay to the IRS for unemployment taxes. And it can be taken as a credit against any and all um, taxes paid into the IRS related to payroll. But if there is a credit that exceeds that tax amount, then this form here is to get an advance payment, okay? So what this is indicating that uh, you're, uh, basically what this is indicating to the IRS is, hey, I've got these credits. Um, I wasn't able to, to take advantage of them all in terms of reducing down the amount of money that I'm paying in. So here are my credits, okay? So that's the amount that I want, what it would be adjusted, adjusted for is if you already took some of the credit against what you're paying into the IRS. What's interesting here uh, is the way that you submit this is by fax. Okay, there's nowhere to mail it. And then I looked um, in the instructions numerous times and on this page and articles, and I've not found anywhere indicating um, how they're gonna pay it. So with that being said, they're most likely gonna send a check because with the Form 7002, okay, this is a payroll form, okay? Um, this is not related to your individual taxes. So even if the bank does have your personal bank account 
on file or even if you're paying taxes and you think well the IRS has my bank account no indication here there'll be any kind of um, direct deposit for this amount and you can apply it every you can do this every time you run a payroll so if your credit's two thousand dollars and the amount that needs to get paid into the IRS for Social Security Medicare withheld and matched as well as federal income tax withheld right so if all of that combined is only eight hundred dollars and they have a thousand dollar credit well they're going to take the credit against the 800 that they would need to pay into the IRS but then that 200 that's left over in essence they would file a form 7200 fax it into the IRS and then best that we know now the IRS is going to mail that business a check so that's the new form 7200 that's an IRS form and that's related to the tax credits it has nothing to do with the PPP or the EIDL uh, I did want to just note note here uh, for those that are going to be uh, waiting until, not waiting, but you have to, uh, to file uh, in 2000, sorry, to file for your PPP on Friday, April 10th, something to note, I'm assuming we're going to get some more guidance, but for some reason, they're wanting you to break out, what are you? Are you self-employed? Are you an independent contractor? Are you a sole proprietor? The only reason I'm curious of that is that are the rules the same? Is there anything different? Uh, so quite a bit of what was covered today in the, the time frame that I was live on YouTube, which I'll do uh, every day this week at 4 p.m. Central Standard Time, um, was, okay, how do we substantiate and what records do we need to pull together for being self-employed? And absent anything else, um, I would definitely think what they're going to need is the Schedule C from your individual return, Schedule C, uh, and then also the Schedule SE. Find the Schedule SE as in self-employment, um, and that would be, in essence, the earnings that are subject to self-employment tax, which is Social Security and Medicare, which is, in, this, in, in, in reality, putting the self-employed individual in the same shoes as an employee, which is a long way of saying that when you go to apply and you're filling this out now, don't guess at one of the three categories. See if there's a difference in the categories. Ask your bank. Once I know, I will put a video out on that. Uh, and again, get your ducks in a row for those that are self-employed, which means you don't have employees uh, and or um, you're a, you know, a sole proprietorship, meaning you're not filing a separate tax return. You don't have 941s. Um, I was surprised there was a number of questions today when we went live that can the bank charge uh, more of an interest rate than the 1%? No. Period. The end. And then um, the, I was surprised somebody that was on, so I don't know if they were here local or not, but they wanted to know what would be the average fee to pay an agent to help them put the deal together. So here's the thing to know. You as the borrower pay no, you pay no one. Okay. Uh, now there might be some time in, uh, to pay for your payroll company to pull records together or your accounting, CPA, tax practice to pull numbers together for you. Um, so obviously that would be based on time. But in terms of having someone help you fill this out and get a banking relationship, uh, if you haven't seen it already, I mean, this is, this is you know, name, address, your ID number, the, the total monthly payroll times two and a half. How many employees do you have? What are you going to use it for? All of these things, including the insurance. Um, list all owners 20% uh, or more. So if you're the only owner, you're going to list it there. Then you just have a series of questions to answer, okay, even on the back side. These are certifications, like actual certifications, uh, indicating that you have all of these things as part uh, of your picture there. So if we are... I just was going around making notes uh, today and then also uh, just looking at what the news was. So I've got some chicken scratch here and a couple of things to note. It was clarified as well by the SBA uh, that gross wages, as we had said, it'll be, in, it, it'll be included in the figures to determine the amount that could be forgiven. Take note, it does not include the payroll 
employer taxes the senate had it the house did it so long story short it's just the wages they're going to count towards forgive is not anybody that you're paying a 1099 to let's see so on my website we talked about i've got the sba interim final rule that came out on friday that gives examples it's it's written really well and great examples in there on how to determine how you get your loan so i'd encourage you to check that out jj the cpa help dot com and then if you are seasonal uh, and you've been in business from january 1st then you take what your payroll is like your w-2 uh, payroll and wearing these glasses so much um, if you are a seasonal employer and you're a new business and you came into play 1120 then from 1120 to 22920 you can take those costs i'm, I'm sorry that profit okay or those wages and then extrapolate that out so if you're in business two months okay well divided by two there's your monthly cost times two and a half that's the amount that you're going to put in for your max loan sba computers um people are saying they crashed today the sba is saying well they didn't crash but i guess they didn't give any other indication i don't think that's a big deal i'm sure that there was massive amounts of information coming in at the same time. And when you're talking about 349 billion uh, being given out, uh, not that that'll be 349 billion customers, uh, but the banks are having to deal with um, not only getting the information from the client, but then also getting it up to the bank. So long story short, I've, I've had a number of people say, hey, did your, did your, does any of your clients have the money yet? And uh, you know, no, no one has the money uh, at this time. So we need to be patient this week and not get upset that you don't get your money this week. Uh, but at the end of the day, it takes a lot of time to get those things uh, entered in. And I think uh, that pretty well covers it. Um, other than it was about 4 p.m. that the SBA said, hey, everything's rocking and rolling, minor glitch. Uh, so make sure that you're uh, having your banker get back on it tomorrow. Uh, ask your banker as a self-employed individual if that's if that's you, right? You don't self-employed individual. You don't file a separate return. Then you're a sole proprietor. If you get a 1099 to you personally, and you really you know have a business, okay? Well, that's kind of a independent contractor. Is just, you did one thing and you're moving on with life. Um, the the last one uh is the one that you know you'll need to go and get your own loan okay um you'll be in a situation where um that will be required I hopefully that made sense because just to be honest with you whew, I, I think i actually fell asleep while i was talking in that last one so Hopefully it made sense. All right, hey, uh, that's the wrap up for uh, April 7th. Um, and that way as you go into today, Tuesday, you've got the latest uh, for self-employed individuals. Friday is the day. Uh, on my website, if you're not tracking things in QuickBooks and you haven't filed 2019, I have a very plain vanilla P&L that you can use because when you go to the bank, I think what you're gonna want to have ready with you is your 2018 tax return specifically Schedule C and Schedule SE, which indicates self-employment earnings. I believe it'll be based on the net. We're waiting on further guidance. I don't think it'll be based on the gross. For independent contractors, you should be reporting that on Schedule C typically, um, and it would be subject to self-employment tax. Um, and then you have self-employed, sole proprietor, independent contractor. Well, those are all on Schedule C. Long story short, those that are going to get S, uh, going to get PPP money on Friday, okay, uh, they need to have those tax returns. They need to have a Schedule C for I would think for at least 18, if not both. And if you don't have your return done, uh, don't go. You just like go to your tax preparer's house and drag them back to the office to put it together. Because really, at the end of the day, okay, what is the P and L that the banks are going to want is What'd you bring in and what are your business expenses? Okay, it can't be all of a sudden you don't know what a business expense is and you're all confused, okay? 
So I say that on behalf of all the taxpayers, uh, tax professionals, CPAs, EAs, and accountants, okay? Um, if you're needing financials for 19, I'm just gonna probably say it, um, and you haven't given anything to whoever helps you with that stuff, you need to do it yourself. Um, if you have given your stuff to that individual, then let them know, hey, I'm, uh, to your tax preparer, say, hey, I'm gonna apply for this, can I either get a copy? You know, our office is closed, okay? So anyways, my point, think ahead, don't wait till Friday, okay? If you wait till Friday, then you were just wanting to be stressed, you wanted to have drama, you're wanting to get on Facebook and talk about how hard this is, okay? So what are you doing, okay? If your business is truly having issues, which is required to get the PPP, self-employed individuals are going to have more work to indicate what it is that their income is, okay? Their quote unquote payroll costs, okay? So for an employer, they've got W-2s, they got 1090, I'm sorry, they got W-2s, W-3, they have 941s, 940 has been asked for by one bank, but as a self-employed individual, you need to have P&L, you need to have your Schedule C, if you're getting 1099s, that's 1099 miscellaneous box seven, okay? That is then essence what you're gonna to wanna to pull together. If you own a partnership and you're getting a K-1 from it, you cannot pay yourself wages as you know, but if there are amounts in box 14 as guaranteed payments or amounts in, I'm sorry, box four is guaranteed payments, box 14 is self-employment earnings. If you're getting that K-1 and there's amounts in that, you're paying self-employment tax and in essence that, what, that would be what counts and you would apply on your own based on what we know, based on you would, you would file under your own social security number. Uh, if you're getting a K-1 from an S corp, none of that's gonna count, okay? It's just considered investment income, distributions from an S corp or just return of capital. The only thing that's gonna count uh, for those that own an S corp is gonna be what it is they pay themselves uh, in payroll. All right, so I'm gonna go live tomorrow um, at 4 p.m. Central Standard Time and I'll do that also on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday to answer your questions. Uh, you will see that uh, the most, uh, this will be obviously the most recent video, but the video right before this one, if you go to my list of videos, um, it indicates on it, see if I can pull it up. Um, it indicates on it that if you have any questions and you want me to address them live, of course you would need to be uh, on it, you know, on with us. Uh, but if you look here, uh, that's what it'll say. Uh, live stream 4 p.m. Central Standard Time. Leave your questions here. So if you will uh, go and you can just watch that quick video and then in the comments section, uh, maybe list what your question is for when I go live at four. That'll help maybe get to initial questions quicker, number one. Number two, we might be able to streamline it and kind of box it up into subjects. We'll see. Uh, but I know there's a lot of questions out there, a lot of uncertainty. Uh, I really appreciate all the support of the YouTube channel. Um, and I do want to give a special uh, thanks to uh, the Facebook Marketing Ninja um, who put me on his show and then I went right on live on my YouTube channel. So I'm sure that had a nice thing to do. But um, on, the, on the live, uh, just so you know, the reason that we're asking for these in advance um, is that there's been 6,444 uh, views of the live when we went live it was right at about 4,000 people that were on in that three hour and 45 minute time period um, we had no less than 375 people on at one time and most of the time it was around 400 which is just to say if you have questions and you're putting in the comment section during that live segment which is great and what we're why we're doing it it was hard to get to some of those and i did go three hours and 45 minutes um, I won't be able to do that uh, tonight. And that's all just to say that if you have any questions, boom, go to that video that says, hey, go in live, put your, put your questions here. So put them in those comments uh, because I do wanna help. Uh, videos to come in the weeks ahead, if not the week, is I'm going to be addressing things related to forgiveness and how to track it. And if you're doing it in QuickBooks or manual and what documents do you need, walking through the percentages of forgiveness, you know, right now it's focusing in on what do we need and then how do we get it to the banks? How do we calculate the money that is needed? So I really appreciate the inquiries into um, basically, um, you know, what's next, JJ? 
So um, part of that, though, just as an FYI, Emily, so as we also get into that and next week, I want to start addressing your, your cash flow overall. Okay. So uh, just saying that, stay with me because I want to continue to have these updates, but uh, uh, would be good to do some cash flow analysis, figure out where you're going to be, figure out where you stand before this money hits or you're spending a lot of it. Uh, if first and foremost, to ensure that you're using it, the, the PPP money, you're using it for which uh, it was intended. Um, and then also to make sure you don't run out of it too soon. So we're we'll walking through some of those methods. And then we have to remember too, we're, we are going to be back working at some point. Okay. So then what are your plans? What are your numbers now? What were your numbers leading up to the crisis? What were your numbers last year? How can you put yourself in a better position for when the doors open back up? Well, it's knowing your numbers, right? So the profit on the, the station CNBC, P-R-O-F-I-T, uh, Marcus is, uh, you know, a billionaire and he has a reality TV show, but he goes around and he finds businesses, small ones that are struggling that he can invest in and turn them around, uh, which is phenomenal. But what he says all the time is if you don't know your numbers, you don't know your business. So we're going to use this opportunity, you and me, okay, over the next couple of weeks, that you're gonna get familiar with your numbers. So we're gonna be looking at financial statements. We're gonna look at profitability. We're gonna look at if it's cruel cash. Because if you know your numbers, that's also gonna give you a great, great shot at getting through all of this that much better. So we have lots to come, but I'm trying to do kind of one step at a time. I would love it if you'd subscribe. I would really appreciate it. Um, I'm, on all you I'm on all social media, hashtag uh, JJ the CPA. Again, Thank you for all the support. And then we're going to have a great day. We're going to have a great Tuesday. We are progressing. SBA is underway. There's applications getting in. We'll probably be hearing about applications getting approved. And if there's no dollars out by Friday, I bet it's early next week. So we can start taking a, a, a sigh of deep uh, relief for those that are qualifying for the individuals uh, that are sole proprietors, independent contractors, or uh, self-employed. Get your stuff gathered up. Check with your bank. Make sure your bank is doing the PPP with self-employed. Ask them what guidelines they have. What documents do they need? I've been giving you, and if you see the videos, here's an idea of what I think you need, but it's just that. Here's what I think you need. We have no guidance uh, for, the, for, the, for the federal government. So, whew. all right. Hey, thanks for tuning in. This is our update. Let's go get them. JJ, the CPA, out.